Good Monday morning. Today I would like to talk about why it is important to understand why you are doing things and specifically why you're using a certain library. What is the problem that this library is actually using? Why is the industry using this tool? Why is your workplace using this tool? I am your host, MPJ, and you are watching Fun Fun Function. Oh, my hair color has faded and I have a different t-shirt. Oh, it means I'm MPJ from the future. I'm just dropping into this timeline to tell you that today's episode is sponsored by Devlifts, the only fitness company focused solely on developers. Devlifts creates all your workouts and nutrition info so that you know exactly what to do. To keep you motivated, they also have a helpful Slack community of other developers. Go to devlifts.io to check them out. And if you decide to sign up, don't forget to use the coupon code Fun fun function because that gives you 20% off. All right, I'm gonna hand it back to MPJ from the past. So what prompted this episode was that uh, I'm doing this uh, other series on machine learning. And uh, what makes this series is from different from, uh, from other series about machine learning is that it builds something very much out from scratch. I'm forcing myself not to use any uh, high level uh, machine learning libraries like TensorFlow, for instance. I got an interesting objection uh, in the comment field on one of these videos that I'm going to address here because um, the, the comment uh, contains a lot of good misconceptions. Uh, that are very common uh, and they're all baked into this, uh, this, this comment and I, I want to address it because it's, it's, very, it's very core to what fun fun function is and um, why I do the things I do and why I make the videos in the way that, that I do. This is comment. No one programs neural networks manually anymore. There, there's toolkits for that. Please go back into the web dev arena. Smiley face. The reason why I wanted to do a, um, some videos on making a neural network from scratch uh, and not using uh, a, a pre-made library like uh, TensorFlow.js, for instance, is that I just found myself getting very confused when learning, um, getting into machine learning because so many uh, tutorials just through you into, okay, we're gonna use this tool, we're gonna use this tool to do uh, uh, multiplication. Uh, you should also do this thing. Uh, you, should, uh, you should normalize your inputs. You should, um, you should do this and that, and you should add a learning rate and because of thing. Uh, and I find that whenever I do something, um, in order to be motivated, I need to kind of see a failing example that demonstrates why something is important. So we want to start with like, just, okay, we're gonna code it in your network, we're gonna make it from scratch and we're gonna fail and we're gonna run into problems and we are gradually going to like, try to solve these problems until we end up with TensorFlow, you know? Uh, so we're not gonna start with TensorFlow, we're gonna like create a series of failures that lead us to use TensorFlow. We're gonna try to follow the path of the people that created TensorFlow. And the reason why this is so important is that we would lose interest otherwise. Mm. So if you watch this video, sorry, if you watch this channel for a while, then you, you might have picked up on that I'm very big on why. Whenever I talk about a tool uh, or a technique or whatever, I tend to spend a lot of time on like why it's important to learn this. Where did it come from? Who invented it? And, and what was their motivations at the time? I don't always succeed in that, but I, I try to always do that. I think it's a valid question to challenge why that is important. Do we really need to understand why things exist in order to use them? I mean, 
Like, you might be at a workplace and they, they're using Angular, whatever, we're using Angular. Our app is built in jQuery, you work in jQuery, you get, you get paid. I'm never gonna build a jQuery, I'm never gonna build an Angular, so why should I care? My reasoning is this. Programming is constantly changing, right? And in order to adapt to a changing landscape, we need to constantly learn. And in order to constantly learn, we need to stay constantly motivated to learn. We need to stay passionate, we need to stay interested. And then the question of course becomes, how do you stay motivated? How do you stay interested? Where does that come from? And I am a firm believer that that comes from asking why, understanding why. Why is React important? What's the problem that it's solved? Why is TensorFlow important? What is an example where we need to use TensorFlow? It's important to be critical here and like fully understand if it's important for you to learn it. And like uh, ask yourself, is the, does the problem that Facebook had when they created React really apply to my application? jQuery gained a lot of popularity back in the day. Ask yourself, are those reasons still relevant? Are the problems that these tools solve applicable to you? All right, let's talk about uh, constant change for a little bit. So you might have heard the term like the only constant is change. Like just learn to roll with uh, the concept of change in your life and you, uh, you will have an easier time to deal with life. If you try to stand still as the universe moves, you're basically gonna lose because the universe is heavier than you. But to be honest, I think that there are actually industries and um, lines of work where you can kind of sort of get away with learning one thing well at the beginning of your career and just sticking with that until you die. There are absolutely fields and lifestyles that are like that and will allow for that. Programming is not one of those. No! What I'm saying here is that as a software developer, you need to be a person with a relatively high tolerance for change. You need to be able to roll with the punches. Okay, but be honest now, aren't you saying this just because you're a web developer specifically? Like, I'm thinking about JavaScript frameworks and, and how, how JavaScript frameworks are released five minutes per second. Like, just spare me that. Uh, it's, that's not what I'm saying at all. Like, I think that the rate of change in JavaScript is one of the most exaggerated things. Like, people just love to rant about, who, how many frameworks are released in, for JavaScript every second. The two big mainstream frameworks that are used today in production are Angular and React. Uh, we have, like, up-and-comers, like Vue.js, but it's like, this tiny. Uh, Angular was released seven years ago and React was released five years ago. You might be following a media space, like people on Twitter or, or uh, medium blogs that just, oh my god, this is a new framework. But uh, if you just calm down and look at things that actually gain like more than 1% market penetration, uh, then uh, you, you need to learn something new, perhaps every two or three or four years or something like that. If that rate of change uh, intimidates you, uh, then yeah, you are definitely in the wrong field. And I know there's gonna be like new databases and stuff in between there, so like the actual number of new tools that you're gonna learn is probably gonna be a couple of tools per year. That's not all that crazy, that's not unreasonable. But it does require you to have a, an attitude of interest, of constant learning, uh, that other industries might not require. Interest or excitement or, or passion or, or motivation um, or um, self-efficacy, maybe, is very much one of the core things that this show is about. For example, um, like I have a video about monads. Uh, I'm 
pretty content with it as a like a monad video monad tutorial or whatever you you like to call it but here's the thing i can't teach you what a monad is in a video when it comes down to it only you can teach yourself monads by actually making a monad just looking at somebody explaining a monad just looking at somebody making a monad it, it doesn't really make you get it so ironically the the objective of a fun fun function video is is not really to make you learn a concept because a video just can't achieve that really uh, it is meant to give you the the why the motivation to learn it and like a feeling of hey i'm able to do this and motivate you and push you to make that little extra journey on your own like give you the first steps maybe of course but in the end it's you that have to learn these concepts i can only guide you in the right direction and perhaps instill a spark in you but I, I can't follow you all the way only you can do that and I think that uh, a common thread with becoming an adult and, and going uh, and going from a junior developer to being a senior developer one of the key things there is understanding context understanding why why are we doing this why was this tool built why are we doing what well what we do it's really interesting that this comment says get back into the web dev arena because this this show has never meant uh, to teach web development in any way. I mean, I I, uh, I am a web developer by trade and many of the uh, things I, I teach are useful in web development. But the objective of this show has always been to uh, target a person uh, that is about one year into their full-time job and uh, they're asking themselves okay I am a developer now uh, what now how do I go from developer to to great developer so this show is is more about like okay I assume that you you kind of know react or whatever was popular by the at, at the time you got into programming and my when I got into uh, web development, uh, Knockout was really popular, for instance, like that was the shit. And talking to uh, these persons and helping them understand the context that they are in, like uh, what came before, uh, what, uh, what, what, what are the steps that led us up to this point? Why are we doing the things we do? Why do we use a tool like TensorFlow? Why, why don't you just code the math? Why is your organization using React? What is the problem that React solves? Does your organization actually have that problem? I can buy that that is interesting, but is there actually a purpose to this exercise? Just constantly challenging everything sounds like a lot of work and it seems like it might also just turn you into like an asshole in the workplace. I also understand that it's very meta that I'm asking why it is important to ask why. It is important to know why we are doing things because uh, that determines our motivation to do things and that determines our attention spans. I recently ran across this really interesting article uh, that compared uh, Mayan kids with uh, kids in the United States and their attention spans. And the difference between the two cultures are it's like night and day. Uh, the, uh, the US children, they have almost no attention span while the Mayan kids just say are super focused and really attent uh, attentive to the task. Their attention uh, is like ludicrously better than uh, US kids. There are several aspects to this, of course, but one of the things that researchers have discovered are key to attention and attention span and focus is motivation, knowing why you are doing something. If you look at this research, it seems like boredom and disinterest are um, actually nature's way of, of making us avoid things that are not valuable to us so that we don't waste time on a bunch of activities that are not really uh, servicing our interests. 
So they performed an experiment on, uh, on a bunch of people and they divided it into two groups and both groups were tasked to uh, perform a, a series of tasks. The difference between the two groups was that one group was told that if they did well on the results, the, they could get out of the lab sooner. That was the only difference between the two groups, that little thing where they just told them that their uh, results would affect an outcome. So basically one group was given motivation and one group was not. Personally, I was not really surprised per se to see that this increased the um, attention span of people, but it surprised me to what extent it did. Uh, the people that had been, giving, been given motivation were able to sustain attention for 50% uh, more than the people that didn't. More than 50%. And from a statistical standpoint, that is just bizarre. That is huge. They also measured brain activity while they were doing this experiment and they could see clear differences where uh, the people that were given motivation, uh, they had like the, uh, the attention center, the, this, well, the, the parts of the brain that control attention were lit up uh, pretty much constantly, while the people that did not receive motivation, uh, the uh, motivation bulb was basically like pff, flashing on and off. And that is why I'm spending so much time uh, on the question of why we are learning something. Uh, because if you don't know that, you're not gonna pay attention. And that's not a criticism against you, it's, it's just how our brains work. Programming is constantly changing, so we need to be constantly learning. And in order to constantly learn, we need to be constantly interested, pay to, to constantly have attention and interest. And in order to do that, we need to understand why things are important. Boom! Don't forget our sponsor, DevLifts. You can find them at devlifts.io. And don't forget to use the coupon code FUNFUNFUNCTION because it gives you 20% off. If you're new, this was an episode of Fun Fun Function. I release these every Monday morning, 0800 GMT. If you are forgetful, you can click here to subscribe so that you don't miss it. Or you can check out another episode right now by clicking here. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.